All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and welcome to my March 2018 update video for, you guessed it, March 2018. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm going to go over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So let's just jump right into it, as a much more famous YouTuber would say. So I tried recording this monthly update video earlier on my trusty Sony Alpha 5100. Uh, but the main problem with this camera is that it overheats very quickly. So if you don't record in like 10 to 15 minutes, it just shuts down and you gotta like cool it down. And at that point, I'm, I'm kind of like on a roll with talking about stuff. So it's like, uh, now I gotta go back and talk about the things again. And hopefully I can nail the takes better and then all of a sudden get back into what I was talking about. So, you know, it is what it is. And it's like the only like alpha that has the little flip out screen. Like the other ones have the weird little tilty thing. It's like, like <laughs> I can't work with that as far as, you know, filming myself. So anyway, that's why I'm filming on the webcam today. So there you go. Anyway guys, uh, let's just jump right into it. As I was saying, um, with the YouTube -y news, and this is something I've been wanting to talk about for a while, but, uh, I didn't want to jinx it because of, YouTube partnership program revisions and stuff like that. So I think we can uh, safely um, celebrate my recent milestone of reaching over a thousand subscribers. So I'm very excited about that. I think at the time of this recording, I'm very close to getting over 1300 subscribers. So very excited about that. Thank you guys for subscribing to this humble, humble channel. And because I've reached over a thousand subscribers, I'm now able to retain my YouTube partnership program uh, benefits. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and I'm hoping to make more videos for you guys in the future. So that way, you know, you subscribe to the channel for something. So, um, but it's not gonna be like an everyday thing. It might be like a weekly or every other week sort of thing because of my other commitments, most notably with video editing so uh, for those of you who don't know I'm the main video editor for the TKO Sam channel as well as now for the Eric Surf 6 channel so I'm very excited to be working with those guys um, they're great people and uh, we're definitely going to be making some great vids for you guys in the future so I've also done some side work for my buddy Radley from the Rad Culture channel and I'm now recently starting up work for Brian of the Ramen Adventures channel we're going to be putting out some good videos for his channel in the coming months, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Um, but that's been kind of the main reason why I haven't really been making so many videos on my channel is that, you know, I just don't have time to make stuff for myself because I'm busy either working my IRL job or, you know, working on videos for other people. So, you know, it kind of is what it is, but I'm hoping to be making some more stuff for you guys in the coming months. So. Anyway, that's all I got to say about the war in Vietnam as far as video making and stuff like that goes. So let's get right into the personal life stuff. So um, as far as, you know, this past month or so, uh, I've been feeling pretty good. And as you guys know, I took a break from college uh, for a semester just to kind of, you know, get myself back together again. Um, last semester, I didn't really do so well. Uh, mostly due to anxiety and depression. Uh, just felt like I was burning myself at multiple ends and was just wearing myself out. Um, so I decided to take a semester off to uh, rethink a lot of things. And one of the big things was um, continuing to stay in this area. And I think um, nothing against this area in particular. I'm sure, you know, the people that live here love it and they think it's nice and, you know, more power to you. But for me, it just, you know, isn't my scene. I don't really like it. So another reason why I took a break from college is so that way I can eventually move back home to Ohio. Um, talk to my folks about it. They're really keen on the idea and um, gonna be moving back with them uh, the end of this month, beginning of next month. So by the time you see this, you know, <laughs> I might've already been moved in, never know. Never know who's watching this and when. So, in any event, um, gonna be moving back in with them uh, temporarily, mostly just as a cost-saving measure. Um, gonna be uh, working to save up some money 
So that way I can, you know, move in my own place proper, have a good amount of savings. I know it's not an ideal situation to be moving back in with your parents as a 30-something, but, you know, it just kind of is what it is right now. Um, I just feel like um, it's a good move uh, for a couple reasons. Um, but also, you know, just to have a good support network there. I think that's, that's the main reason why I failed out in Kalamazoo. Not just, um, not just at college, but it just felt like I failed overall living out here. Um, you know, when I was looking up colleges when I was getting out of the Navy, um, a good social network <laughs> wasn't really something I thought about because, like, I've always been kind of a loner, you know, just an introvert. So I felt like I didn't really need to be around a lot of people. And plus, being in the Navy, you're in, in close proximity to a lot of people anyway. So I felt like at that time that it would just be best for me to kind of distance myself from people and just kind of take a break from being around people 24 seven. You know, I just wanted to do my own thing, be by myself. I didn't want roommates because, you know, I didn't really know anybody in this area at the time. And I certainly didn't really trust anybody. Didn't want to like put up an ad on Craigslist and get roomed with a psycho. I mean, it'd make a nice story, but I might lose a kidney, so <laughs> didn't want that to happen. Um, but in any event, um, being out here did teach me a lot. Um, I did have a lot of uh, emotional baggage leaving the Navy. I didn't really think I would have that when I, when I was on the inside looking out. But um, being on the outside now, um, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of issues that I've dealt with over these past couple of years that I didn't really see as problems when I was still on the inside, you know, cause you know, my level of thinking at that time was, um, it basically just felt like I was transferring. You know, I was going from working on board USS Lassen in Yokosuka, Japan at the time to transferring to college. <laughs> you know, it was like going from, you know, USS ship to USS college. You know, that's kind of the mentality that I approached it with is that, you know, this is my new life, this is my new job, you know, and I'm gonna do the best I can at, you know, what I do. But, you know, there's a lot of downtime and I think that really um, hurt me the most was that there's a lot of time for me to unpack emotionally and just a lot of time for me to just kind of, you know, get my feelings in order and it was a very uncomfortable experience you know doing that over a period of time and plus dealing with school dealing with you know readjustments back to American life um, I think I got a lot of that emotional baggage in order now um, I, I definitely feel feel a lot better mentally I still have my moments as I think I always will of just you know not feeling like I'm right with the world or that I'm focusing on what I should be focusing on. One of the main things that has been worrying me is, you know, am I moving forward in the right direction? You know, am I doing something right now that is moving me forward in the direction that I want to be? And that's something that I'm just like always worried about. You know, it's very hard for me to be in the moment. And that's one of the things I've really been trying my hardest to focus on is being more in the now because I'm always focused on you know future Andy you know Andy from you know maybe like one to two to three years from now not so much Andy right now recording this video looking at this little piece of glass and having a little fuzzy microphone to talk into you know I'm, it's hard for me to focus on that Andy because I'm focused on you know future Andy so that's one of the things that has really been helping me in getting a much clearer mental state. And, um, you know, that's not to say I haven't been focusing on the future, but it's a lot easier to deal with the here and now when you're in the here and now. So, um, but if you do want to hear about some future talk, um, one of the main things that I've been saying, and I even said it earlier, is that I want to go back to Japan. I've been saying that pretty much since I got back to America. So for years now, 
Um, but it, it's been a, a complicated situation because um, it's, you know, it's not like I can just buy a ticket and go to Japan. I mean, I can do that, but I mean, that's, you know, only for the short term, maybe for like a week or two. But, you know, I want to be there a bit more long term. Um, so that's a bit more a uh, complicated thing to do. It's a lot of moving parts and stuff like that. And, you know, with my my bad grades in college, it doesn't exactly um, endear me to a lot of the uh, a lot of the staff at uh, colleges out in Japan. So that's kind of been my main uh, downfall is that, you know, I just don't have good enough grades to transfer out there because that's that's been one of my main things um, is, you know, transferring out to Temple University. And I know a lot of people have their opinions about that particular college. Um, and they're definitely not lost on me. But, you know, in order to experience Japan, and especially on the GI Bill, because going international, um, your, your options on the GI Bill are fairly limited. So I feel that Temple is you know, the best option for me. I'm still able to collect BAH while I'm out there because it's technically an American school. So that's really nice um, to be able to afford rent and food and be able to go out and do stuff and things. So that's definitely a major plus for me. Um, but, you know, a lot of my mistakes, you know, have caught up with me as far as like bad grades failing classes, things like that. So it's not as easy for me to just pack up my bags and get on the next flight to Tokyo. Um, it's just, it's a lot of stuff I gotta deal with, so. Um, and moving back in with my folks, you know, another reason why I'm doing it, aside from cost-saving measures, is to hopefully go to another community college out there to help boost my GPA so that way I can transfer out to uh, out to Temple, and uh, I definitely want to, you know, really make it count out there. So I know I only have so much of my benefits left, and I'm just kind of rambling and raving at this point. But uh, you know, if anything, I hope it'll, you know, address a lot of um, questions about, you know, why I'm not in Japan, why I didn't just go to Japan, why don't I just leave this place and go to Japan? Because, you know, it's just I don't really have the uh, the money right now to do that. Um, I kind of dug myself a little bit of a hole and uh, got to dig myself out. So not as easy as it, you know, may appear to be for some people because, you know, for some exchange students or for some students out there, um, it's pretty easy because, you know, mommy and daddy can foot the bill or maybe they worked a whole lot and were able to save up and kind of is what it is but uh you know the uh the desire is still there to go out to japan i felt like creatively i was you know at an all-time peak um i just felt like you know everything flowed creatively you know i was very focused on making videos in japan about certain spots that i thought were very interesting I was constantly looking up new spots that I didn't even know about and, you know, trying to come up with concepts for videos and stuff like that and just kind of see what other people were doing in those areas. And, you know, I kind of did a combination of, you know, popular stuff as well as some local stuff that doesn't get a lot of coverage online. And, you know, looking back at some of those videos, especially after having done all the video editing work for all the people that I work for, um, sometimes it's kind of painful to look at that stuff because it's like, I hardly ever edited stuff because I was so busy out in Seventh Fleet, I didn't really have time to do it. And plus I was still in that like old school, school YouTuber mentality of, you know, if you build it, they will come regardless of the quality. But you know, nowadays I've definitely smartened up to you know, better production quality, better editing. Um, so I think that Andy Japandi season two um, will be a lot better than season one as far as production quality, editing, things like that. You know, because I, I just have more of a more of an eye for things like that now. 
and you know I, I want to make more take more pictures for my Instagram because that's kind of been another thing that's been haunting me is you know doing all these throwback time hop pictures you know it's just like I don't really have anything all that interesting to show you guys right now but you know I just kind of go through the archives and like oh I remember going to that place and then you know just fancying it up with the Instagram app and then putting it out there um, but it just feels like I'm constantly reliving my past by doing that. And, you know, again, it's it's fun to visit, but I don't want to live there. That's kind of my thoughts on the past, you know. But uh, I definitely want to make some new memories out in Japan. I was only really out there for... I mean, technically I was out there for two years. But considering the hectic schedule that I had out in 7th Fleet, um, I was really probably only, like, in Japan, Japan for like a year collectively so I didn't really have a whole lot of time to do stuff so I'm really proud of the amount of stuff that I was able to do in the short time frame that I was out in Japan and I feel like that there's more for me to do and see out there and that's the reason you know I want to go back is that I want to get back into that creative flow of things and to see and do more stuff because even in Tokyo there's a lot of stuff that you know, I want to do out there and uh, in other parts of Japan as well. I don't want it to just be, you know, a Tokyo centric sort of video series. Um, you know, Tokyo is nice. It's got a lot of nice things. A lot of my friends are out there or in surrounding areas. Uh, but there's more to Japan than just Tokyo. It's like California. You know, there's more to California than L.A. You know, <laughs> it is what it is. But uh, definitely want to explore Japan more and, you know, Make some memories, get some dang old pictures out there beyond stuff that I took like three, four years ago. Anyway, guys, um, that's kind of the plan is to boost my GPA through going to, to a local community college when I move back to Ohio. And then from there, uh, applying to Temple, you know, eventually getting accepted as my GPA goes up and then transferring out there. So. You know, once I'm out there, I'll be able to uh, still do some video editing work um, and also get, you know, my GI Bill stipend. So that's definitely nice. But again, it's a lot of moving parts. I got to talk with some people. It's not something I can just, you know, do overnight. So definitely appreciate you guys sticking around uh, for the video, even though I kind of rambled and raved for most of it. So anyway, that said guys, this is the Andy Sun. Sign for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys. Bye. Oh,